Greetings, Spooky fans! Michael here, and today I'm going to be answering the question, is it possible to beat Pokemon Alpha Sapphire with only the cutest Pokemon out there, cast form? Hell yeah it is! is what I would say if it was, but it's not. Cast form cannot learn all of the necessary HMs to progress through the game. In fact, it learns no HMs whatsoever. However, for the sake of this video being possible to make, I'm going to be adding the popular playthrough challenge rule that I can catch other Pokemon, I just can only use them for HMs. The reason I am doing this challenge is because, as many of you know, Cast Form is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon and I think it's the cutest Pokemon out there. However, the fandom as a whole loves to hate on it. But that has only served to strengthen my bond with Cast Form. One of Cast Form's drawbacks, though, is its lackluster stats, so I thought it would be interesting to show the world that you can use Cast Form and just Cast Form to beat an entire Pokemon game. This playthrough challenge, though, is an interesting one, because it's actually the first one I ever started, but only the most recent one that I finished. The playthrough started as a streaming Let's Play alongside my good friend John, aka Pokemon7. The idea was that we would play through Oris using only a cast form each, and whoever finished the Pokemon League with their cast form having fainted the least number of times was the winner. We did a total of five squad streams of this run together over the course of a few months in the summer of 2019, and we got pretty far, getting seven badges each. However, we never finished it. I got busy with moving across the country and wasn't doing much streaming, and then Sword and Shield came out and that got all of our attention, so it just kind of faded from our minds. But then a little while ago, I stumbled upon my Alpha Sapphire cartridge and was reminded of the playthrough that we didn't finish. So I asked John if he would be okay with me finishing the playthrough on my own. I would drop the competition aspect of it, but I would still be able to try to finish a playthrough using just a cast form and then turn it into a fun video. He was completely fine with it, so here we are. This video will be a recounting of the events that transpired, most of them happening on stream, but the last bit happening on my own. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, tap the bell, turn on notifications, you know the drill. And let's get started with finding out if it's possible to beat a Pokemon game using only cast form. First, I should mention why we selected Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, actually Alpha Sapphire for both of us, for the games that we played and did this challenge in. The primary reason was that in this gen, TMs don't break, which is fun because it allows us to change Cast Form's moveset to best work for that particular battle that we have coming up. As for why we chose Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire specifically over any other non-TM breaking games, well, that was simply because I hadn't played the game since launch, and I wanted to play them for the first time in, like, five years. John and I did our playthroughs on completely legitimate game cartridges, which means that we couldn't hack in a cast form to replace one of the normal Hoenn starters. So, we had to pick a normal Hoenn starter, and we both picked Mudkip to use as an HM user later on. So, we progressed through the game normally until we had access to trading, which I believe happened immediately after we saw Wally catch his Ralts. Once we reached that point, we traded over cast form eggs in order to make sure they would obey us the entire time, because if we just traded over cast form, we'd have problems with obedience. The eggs I traded over were bred on my shiny charm possessing Omega Ruby, all with a modest nature and done with the Masuda method. So I traded over several eggs to try and see if I could get a shiny. I did not. Once I'd hatched all of them, I selected what seemed to be the best one and named it Ozone, because it's a cool sounding name that references Cast Form's molecule inspiration. That's right, Cast Form is a molecule. The part at the bottom that people call boobs or balls or whatever are atoms. Learn science, people. Ozone was only level one though, so I had to switch train it for one battle to get it to a level where it could win by itself. If the cast form had been hacked in to replace a starter, it would have started at level five and therefore this switch training wouldn't have been necessary. However, since we were limited by the laws of a legitimate cartridge, we had to bend the rules just a bit at the very beginning here. Once it could win on its own though, I grinded up Ozone to level 10. 
I did this because I was afraid of Rich Boy Winston's level eight Zigzagoon, since it had given John some trouble earlier when his cast form was only level six. I picked level 10 because that's when cast form simultaneously learns Water Gun, Ember, and Powder Snow. And having those special moves would make it so I didn't have to worry about Zigzagoon's growl. That ended up being overkill though, and I beat Rich Boy Winston pretty easily. Things were pretty smooth sailing up to Roxanne's gym, with the only thing of note being replacing Ozone's tackle with Headbutt. The battle itself with Roxanne was pretty easy. Geodude did take multiple hits due to Sturdy and Nose Pass required two water guns, but Ozone only took a little bit of damage throughout the short and easy battle. Just as a heads up, the earlier part of this playthrough is the easier part because Castform's base stat total is 420, <laughs> which is terrible for a fully evolved Pokemon, but very good compared to the not fully evolved Pokemon found this early in the game. So it will get progressively tougher the further into the game we get. We progress through the game until arriving at Dufert, where I picked up the Silk Scarf to help power up Castform's headbutt. Once there, I spent a decent chunk of time grinding against both the gym trainers and the wild Pokemon in Granite Cave in order to reach level 20. Level 20 was the target because that's the level at which Cast Form learns Hail, Sunny Day, and Rain Dance. We wanted these weather moves specifically because it would allow us to change Cast Form's type to something that was not normal therefore no longer being weak to Brawly's fighting type moves. However, this forced us into a dilemma. While the eventual plan was to obtain all three weather changing TMs, except Sandstorm, poor Castform doesn't get a Sandstorm form, in order to change Castform's moveset to best suit a particular battle, those TMs come in the later half of the game. The earliest one is after you get five badges. So therefore, when we learned these three weather moves, we had to pick just one or two to be stuck with for a while. We settled on Rain Dance for a few reasons. We considered Sunny Day Ember Water Gun Rain Dance, but we opted against it since Headbutt was pretty effective. Keeping Headbutt is actually the reason we chose Rain Dance. It best handles the two types that resist normal. Water is strong against rock and neutral against steel. Fire is strong against steel, but weak to rock, and Ice is weak to both. We did keep Ember around for coverage though, so the final moveset going into Brawly's battle was Headbutt, Water Gun, Ember, and Rain Dance. At the start of the battle, I immediately Rain Danced, causing Ozone to change forms for the first time in this playthrough. Machop's Karate Chop did way less damage as a result, and the next turn I blasted it away with a Rain Boosted Water Gun. The next turn Water Gun also Okoed Makuhita, so thanks to my weather preparation, the battle I was pretty afraid of ended up being pretty easy. Actually, this part here just reminded me, I use the term Oko a lot in these playthrough challenge videos and some people don't know what that term means. So I will explain, Oko is O-H-K-O, short for one hit knockout. So when I say cast form Oko'd something, it knocked it out in one hit. The next game segment through Slateport was pretty uneventful until finding May on Route 110 the first rival battle of the playthrough while actually using Cast Form. It was pretty easy though. Cast Form's headbutts either one or two hit KO'd all of her Pokemon. Winning that battle got Cast Form to level 25 though, which means Ozone tried to learn Weather Ball. For a while I was looking forward to the move, but when the time finally came, I decided against it. I was excited because it would change types with me no matter the weather, Plus it would be a normal type special move and remember, Ozone has a modest nature. However, while it is a special move, Headbutt was much stronger and had the flinch chance. Also, while it would be stronger than Water Gun if under rain, it would be outclassed by much stronger water moves later in the game. So I just decided to skip Weather Ball. The next major battle was the gym battle against Watson, where Ozone stayed in his normal form as to not get bodied by electric moves. Ember would have KO'd his Magnemite if not for Sturdy, and in exchange, he paralyzed me. He used a potion on the same turn I healed the paralysis, and then I attempted to flinch it with Headbutt while I broke Sturdy. That didn't work though, so I healed again, expecting Magnemite to attack, allowing me to outspeed and KO the next turn. Magnemite used Volt Switch though, bringing in Voltorb, which Ozone Oko'd with Headbutt. Magnemite came back in and I immediately KO'd it with Ember. 
Then came Magneton, which I headbutted to break the Sturdy. It simply attacked, no paralysis problems, so the next turn I finished it off with Ember. Watson was done. Side note, can we just talk about how dumb it is that Watson's team in Ruby, Sapphire, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire has no Hoenn-type Pokemon? Like in Emerald, he has a Manectric, which makes sense. That should be his ace. Why does he not have a Manectric in any of the other Hoenn games? I don't understand. We then progress through the northwestern parts of Hoenn, fighting Team Aqua and the like in Meteor Falls. Shortly before the battle with Archie atop Mount Chimney, Ozone reached level 35 meaning it tried to learn Hydro Pump, Fire Blast, and Blizzard all at once. John and I both decided to skip Hydro Pump. While the power is great, the accuracy and especially the power points can be a problem when you're limited to just using one Pokemon. Plus, with the rain boost and the stab boost Castform gets when it's under the rain, Water Gun was doing fine. John skipped Blizzard and Fire Blast, and while I skipped Blizzard, I personally opted to swap Ember for Fire Blast due to the lack of sun. Ember's low power was proving to be pretty limited at times since we couldn't boost it with the sunlight, so Fire Blast would really make up for that. Plus, I knew that if I hated it, I could just replace it with Incinerate since the Incinerate TM was on Mount Chimney. I was about to get it. It was soon time for my first battle with Archie, which caused a few problems. The Mighty Anna immediately used Swagger, which I was actually happy about since the next turn I could heal the confusion with a Person Berry, yet keep the double attack. However, right after healing, the Mighty Anna roared, forcing my HM user Zigzagoon onto the field forcing me to let it faint the next turn, meaning my attack boost was sadly gone. Ozone came back in and quickly finished off the Mighty Yenna. In came Sharpedo, which I fire blasted to avoid being hurt by Rough Skin. It did more than half, so the next turn I KO'd it with Headbutt to ensure that I didn't miss. Finally was Golbat, which was annoying due to confusion. It confused me right away and Ozone hit itself twice in a row, forcing me to use a rare potion during battle. He eventually snapped out though and finished the Golbat, winning the battle. Afterward, I grabbed the Incinerate TM and I swapped it in for Fire Blast because the PP and accuracy problems were starting to worry me. We then hopped down the mountain, then after a devious trip to the empty women's side of the hot spring, which for some reason had an ice heel, I went to Flannery's gym and took her on almost immediately. This battle got kinda goofy. I immediately set up the rain, transforming Ozone into a water type, which is clearly best suited for this gym. Slugma set up Light Screen though, which was a tad concerning since it canceled out Water Gun's super effectiveness. It ended up not mattering against Slugma though, and I O-coded it with Water Gun the next turn. Numel came in and was again dispatched immediately. Then came Torkoal, which sadly survived Water Gun due to Light Screen. Then things got interesting because Torkoal used Sunny Day, forcing my cast form into its sun form and therefore being a fire type for the first time this playthrough. How incredibly rude of you, Torkoal! Let Ozone choose his own typing. Let Ozone be what I tell him to be. I set the rain back up on the same turn Torkoal used Curse. But then the following turn, I misclicked and used Rain Dance again, thus giving Torkoal a chance to set the sun back up before I could KO it. Haha, uh -huh. oops. I had to set the rain back up again, then Torkoal hit me with an overheat, which did the least amount of damage I have ever seen Flannery's Torkoal do with that move. The next turn, I finally finished it with a water gun. And then it was time for Norman the gym leader infamous for being consistently the most difficult in the Hoenn region. Prior to this battle, I got rid of Incinerate and replaced it with Double Team, which I had the flexibility to do because I had the TMs for both. I made this decision because I figured boosting Cast Form's evasion during the turns that the Slackings were loafing around could come in handy. The first turn I tried for a headbutt flinch, which I was optimistic I would get since John got so many of them when he was fighting Norman, but I didn't get it, and Slacking yawned me. After healing away the sleep, Slacking encored cast form, forcing Ozone to double team several times consecutively. It hit me with another yawn though, despite my boosted evasion, so I had to Chesto Berry another time. A couple headbutts later, Slacking was down. In came Vigoroth, which attempted Retaliate, a terrifying move since its power is 140 if used the turn after a fellow party member faints, which applied here. It would have done massive damage, 
but thanks to my several double teams, it missed. Double team is a terrible, awful, evil move, unless you're the one using it. In came the final slacking, which was very resistant to dying. During the fight, it hit me several times with chip away. At the time, it was frustrating me that he didn't miss a single chip away, but looking back on it, I realized that chip away ignores evasion boosts, so my double teams didn't help me here. We both healed on the same turn, then a few turns later, I thought he would heal again, so I double teamed again. He didn't heal though, and since Ozone lived the next chip away, I was able to finish it off, earning me my fifth badge. Now that we could surf, we headed south from Slateport to both level up against the swimming trainers and go through Sea Mauville as much as we could at the time. Sea Mauville also had the TM for Rain Dance, which wasn't helpful at the time since we already knew it, but it gave us the power to delete and reteach the move at any point, meaning we had a bit more flexibility with weather usage. We then headed east from Mauville City, obtaining Latias for HM usage and the useless Mega Bracelet. Kind of weird using a legendary as an HM mule. Not long after getting Latias though, I ran in to the toughest battle of the playthrough so far by a large margin. On Route 118, I enter a battle with an Aroma Lady who sends out a Vile Plume. Normally this wouldn't be a big deal, but at the time it was raining in the overworld, forcing my cast form into being a water type. I now have to take out a Vile Plume while stuck as a water type because I have no other weather moves to get rid of the rain. Plus the rain nerfs the power of my super effective fire type move. The situation is, how do I put this? Sticky! After two fortunate turns due to Stun Spore missing and me forcing a flinch, I got the Vile Plume down to what I thought was enough to KO. The stupid thing barely lives the last headbutt though, then paralyzes Ozone. I now move second, which is bad because the Vile Plume mega drains, doing a good chunk of damage and healing itself at the same time, meaning my next move didn't KO. The next turn I was fully paralyzed, making me intent on healing the paralysis. I had no full restores though, so it took me two turns to fully heal, meaning its Mega Drains got it back up to three quarters of its max health. Then of course, it immediately paralyzed me again, and on the turn I heal, it Mega Drains. Now almost completely back to full health after it lived with what's gotta be less than five HP. I was starting to get very mad. Once again, it paralyzed me and I healed the paralysis as it mega drained. The next turn I attempted a headbutt and actually got a flinch, but the following turn I got scared and healed up. Suddenly though, the Vile Plume went for poison powder instead of mega drain, which gave me the opening I needed. Not being paralyzed meant I was still faster and then two headbutts later, I ended it. I had to use six healing items in a 1v1 battle. It was very frustrating, screw you, overworld rain. Because of the overworld rain forcing Ozone into being a water type, traversing through Route 119 was kinda scary. However, during that process, Cast Form got to level 45, having a chance to learn its final level up move, Hurricane, which I deleted Rain Dance for due to the rain being everywhere. The overworld rain changed from being a hindrance into a benefit because it made Hurricane 100% accurate, allowing me to blast through the various bug and grass types I ran into. I reached the Weather Institute and fought through it with little issue. They gave me another cast form, which I of course boxed immediately because it's a cast form solo run, not a cast form duo run. Right after was the next May battle, which was very easy thanks to Hurricane. Once arriving in Fortree, I got the Hidden Power TM and discovered Ozone's Hidden Power typing was Dragon which was pretty cool since it could come in handy against Winona's Altaria and Drake's Pokemon later, and Ozone doesn't learn any dragon type attacks. I immediately headed to the Scorched Slab and finally got the TM for Sunny Day, meaning now I can switch between Rain and Sun at any point. Prior to the gym battle with Winona, I deleted Hurricane for Hidden Power Dragon because I wanted Hidden Power Dragon to use against Altaria. Plus, Hurricane isn't as good when you don't have the rain, and I wasn't intending to run rain for this battle. Then began my battle with Winona. I o her Swallow immediately with Headbutt, 
Altaria was then taken out with two hidden powers. I first headbutted Skarmory to break Sturdy as it sand attacked me, then finished it off with a critical hit Incinerate. Finally was Pelipper, which stalled with Protected first. Then thanks to the previous sand attacks my headbutt missed, then its water pulse confused me. While I hurt myself at first, I then was fortunate enough to land two headbutts, winning over Winona. For the trek to Lily Cove, I taught cast form Sunny Day to be able to cancel the overworld rain if I needed. Then in Mount Pyre, I picked up the Shadow Ball TM, which will come in a lot of handy later. I then cleared out Team Aqua on the summit, then witnessed Grand Theft Submarine back in Slateport. My only obstacle to the glorious TMs in the department store is another battle with Mei, which was pretty easy. I KO'd Swellow in one hit, Waylord in two, Macargo in one, then Sceptile in one after setting up the sun. Sceptile, I am very sorry, friend. It had to be done. In the department store, I bought the Thunder TM, but decided to hold off on the others due to how expensive they were, plus not needing them right away. I then headed off to the Safari Zone just to fetch the Solar Beam TM, which pairs nicely when I go for Sun. For all of Cast Form's flaws, its move pool is not one of them. The Aqua Hideout didn't pose any issues, so once it was done, I headed east from Lily Cove straight to Shoal Cave to get the TM for Hail. Unfortunately, it was high tide when I entered, and the TM is only available at low tide. I had to change my 3DS clock to make it correct, but once that was sorted out, I made my way into the deepest chamber and picked up the TM. Now Ozone can run all three weathers that are compatible with it, which means I can choose between four different typings for any particular battle at any point, assuming I prep in advance. This is a pretty unique and fun power to have, and it's a big reason why I wanted to do this run. The next major battle was Tate and Liza, which required me to have a second Pokemon in my party to use. I only brought my Fly and Flash using Latias, not realizing it didn't have a truly harmless move. To make it so it didn't use anything, I had to use several X items on it during the battle. The battle itself wasn't tough though. Ozone simply repeatedly blasted the enemy Pokemon with Shadow Balls until they were dead. After that gym, I headed around to battle all the various water route trainers to level up before the Seafloor Cavern including fetching the Ice Beam TM from C. Mauville now that I could dive. I also went to the Weather Institute to fetch the Weather Lengthening Rocks, but you could only get one per day. I got the first one, but had to get the others off camera. John, on the other hand, did not do any of the water route grinding that I did and opted to just go straight to the seafloor cavern. That turned out to be a big mistake though, because he lost to Archie. Yeah, uh, M Mikey, good news for you. Uh, Mega, Mega Sharpedo just O code my cast form. What? Yeah, it's 17 levels below me and just O code it with crunch. I, I found the part of the game where cast form is bad. <laughs> and it's and it's when Mega Mega Sharpedo says hello. So I'm going to join you in the, the training against everything I can find because that was ridiculous. <laughs> After some further discussion, we realized that part of the reason that happened was because Archie's Mighty Anna and Muck had dropped his cast form stats with Scary Face and Screech, making it both slower than Sharpedo, but also more easily KO'd. So when I went in there, I had a plan. I went in knowing Rain Dance, Scald, which I'd gotten in the Cavern, Return, which I'd gotten in Pacifilog, and Thunder. Immediately on the first turn, I used a Guard Special, preventing Archie's Pokemon from using the stat drop moves that would doom me against Mega Sharpedo, and it worked immediately. I then O-Code my Deanna with Return. Muck came in and Return O-Code it as well. Against the Crobat, I set up Rain, tanked in Acrobatics no problem, then destroyed both the Crobat and Mega Sharpedo with 100% accurate Thunder. Thanks to John being the guinea pig, I won without any issues. And that was the last stream we did of the Cast Form solo run. And that was the last battle that happened. So that means two things. Number one, because John had one feint and I had zero, I am the wiener. And number two, uh, I have left Hoenn in a state of torrential downpour for the last nine months. I head to Sutopolis and get ready to catch Kyogre since this is a legit cartridge and I want to have a legit Kyogre. 
Prior to delving into the Cave of Origin, I buy a few extra Ultra Balls to use on Kyogre. This was probably overkill though, since after all, Oris did change Groudon and Kyogre's catch rates to match Xerneas and Yavaltal's, so catching it should be pretty easy. Uh, yeah, uh, that was completely wrong. Kyogre's catch rate is still just three in Alpha Sapphire, and the best Pokeballs I had were just Ultra Balls. My lack of false swipe, inability to guarantee a status condition, mediocre Pokeballs, regularly having to heal, and Kyogre rudely healing itself with Aqua Ring resulted in it taking me one hour and four attempts to catch the stupid fish whale thing. I even failed the attempt where I froze Kyogre and it stayed frozen for eight consecutive turns. It broke out every single time and then proceeded to immediately freeze me back once it thawed. It was exhausting but I did finally succeed, and as a result of the freezing shenanigans, I named it Frozen Fish. I also made it my new surf knowing HM mule because seeing Kyogre in the overworld is fun. Now that the world was saved, I could finally get the TM for Thunderbolt by completing the new Mauville mission. Once that was done, I busted into the Sutopolis gym to take on Wallace. I immediately O-code Love Disc with Thunderbolt to prevent Sweet Kiss or Attract shenanigans. Out came my Lodic and I set up the Sun, which may seem counterintuitive because why would I turn myself into a fire type against water types, but the Sun weakening water moves cancels out the weakness. Plus it allows me to fire off one turn solar beams. After I tanked a hydro pump from my Lodic, I did just as I said, O-code the rest of his team with solar beam. After battling the rest of the water route trainers I didn't fight earlier, primarily on the strong current routes between Pacifilog and Slateport, I headed to Evergrande City and the Victory Road, which side note, I had completely forgotten how different it was from the Gen 3 Hoenn games. The trek through was pretty uneventful until reaching a forced double battle. Latias still didn't know any moves that would not impact the battle, so I thought the best way to keep my non-cast form Pokemon from participating was to switch between Latias and Kyogre several times. This was a mistake. I completely brain farted and forgot about Kyogre's Drizzle, which then of course summoned Rain and forced Ozone into being a water type, something I couldn't undo because the only weather move I knew at the time was Rain Dance. Cradilia's energy balls then became a bit of a problem and one of them critical hitting almost KO'd Ozone. He held on though and an earlier Scald Burn came in clutch so I escaped the sticky situation. Before the next force double battle, I taught Latias Psych Up and then just spammed that. Oh, also I got the TM for Flamethrower, which was super important for the rest of the playthrough. The next big obstacle was the final battle with Wally. And while I wasn't super concerned about most of his Pokemon, I was worried about Mega Gallade. I went in with Ice Beam, Sunny Day, Flamethrower, and Shadow Ball, plus the Heat Rock. Ice Beam easily handled Altaria. Against Roselia, I set up the Sun, which accomplishes both making my flamethrower stronger, but also making me no longer weak to Gallade's close combat. I then O-code Roselia before he sent in Magneton. The stupid thing lived flamethrower thanks to Sturdy and subsequently landed Screech, having my defense. This terrified me because I was already worried about Mega Gallade o coding Ozone, and now he's at half defense. This is bad. To be safe and ensure I O-code Mega Gallade, I used an X special on the turn I thought Wally would heal Magneton. He didn't heal though, so the next turn I finished Magneton off. Delcati was swiftly dispatched afterward, then came Mega Gallade. I went for a super effective Shadow Ball, outspeeding, O-coding, and winning the battle. After the battle, I did some calculations because I was curious to see if the X special was actually necessary. Unfortunately, I can't be certain if these calculations are accurate since while I knew the exact stats for cast form, I didn't know them for Gallade. However, I can't approximate, and based on these calculations, Gallade's close combat would have KO'd at the health I was at. Well, the best I could do without the X special was have a small chance to Oko with Flamethrower. Yes, I did have a brain fart and forget that Flamethrower got both the Sun Boost and the Stab Boost, so would have been stronger than Shadow Ball because I forgot about the stab boost. So using Shadow Ball over Flamethrower was an oopsie. However, in the end, the X special was the right call because I likely would not have O-coded the Gallade 
and he likely would have KO'd with the close combat. So my move choice didn't end up mattering because both Shadow Ball and Flamethrower KO'd at plus one. After some quick detours to grab the TMs for Blizzard and Attract, it was finally time for the Pokemon League. This was pretty fun since I got to design and figure out which move sets were best suited for each individual member. So it was kind of like solving a puzzle. First was Sydney, and due to him having two grass types plus a solar beam weak Sharpedo, I went with Sun, running Sunny Day, Flamethrower, Solar Beam, and Return while holding a Heat Rock. I attacked Mightyena right away because I was worried about Swagger, but he ended up sucker punching, so it didn't matter. The attack didn't KO though, so on the turn he healed, I set up the sun, allowing me to Oko with my next flamethrower. Next was Shift Tree, which got to hit me twice thanks to Fake Out, then outspeeding me due to Chlorophyll, but it didn't do much damage, so my flamethrower took it out no problem once it hit. The rest of the battle was three consecutive Okos, Sharpedo with Solar Beam, Absol with Flamethrower, and Cacturn with Flamethrower after it stalled a turn with Spiky Shield. Sydney was done. Next was Phoebe, and I opted not to go with any weather since the normal type was advantageous against the ghosts. I was worried about her Dusk Glops though, since I wasn't sure I could Oko it before it put a curse on Ozone, hence why I brought Attract. Shadow Ball was of course the main attack, Thunderbolt was there in case I ran out of Shadow Balls due to Pressure, Grudge, or Spite, and then Double Team was there, honestly, just to fill the spot. First was the Curse Knowing Dusclops, so I immediately attracted it, which thankfully immobilized it. The next turn I went for Shadow Ball, which surprisingly O-coded, so Attract ended up not even being necessary. Sableye was next, which took a few turns to KO thanks to Fake Out at first, then Thunderbolt not being enough to KO. Phoebe actually used two full restores on Sableye, but as soon as she stopped doing that, I took it out. Next was the first Banet, which was an easy Oko with Shadow Ball. Then came Dusk Noir, which lived a Shadow Ball and hit back, but I got the special defense drop with my Shadow Ball, meaning I would Oko next turn after she healed. She didn't heal though, so my next Shadow Ball simply KO'd. Her last Pokemon was the other Banet, which just like the first one, was easily Oko'd. Two elite four members down, two to go, plus the one champion. Next was Glacia, and while Sun is the ideal weather to fight Glacia due to powering up my fire moves, I didn't actually intend to use it. All but one of her Pokemon know Hail, so I was expecting my Sun to be canceled out if I summoned it. I figured I could handle things with non-boosted Flamethrower and Thunderbolt, but I brought Sun to set up once it got down to just Walrein, since Walrein doesn't know Hail. First was Glalie, and I attacked right away, surprisingly Okoing it without the sun and the stab boost. Next was Frostlass, and I, once again, finished it in one hit. In came another Frostlass, and it was gone too. She then sent out Walrein, and I decided to set up Sun since, as I mentioned earlier, it did not know Hail. While turning Cast Form into a fire type didn't impact the water matchup, it did make me resist the incoming Blizzard. Thunderbolt couldn't Oko though, but it was enough that it forced her to heal, and after she did that a few times, I finally KO'd Walrein. Her last Glalie was easily destroyed thanks to the sun still being up. I beat her without her ever even getting the chance to set up Hail. So I didn't even get to see Hail form cast form. Until the next fight, Hail yeah! Four of Drake's Pokemon are four times weak to ice, so Hail was the obvious choice here. I ran the move itself along with holding an Icy Rock, plus Blizzard, Ice Beam in case Blizzard ran out, and Hidden Power Dragon. I wasn't expecting to use HP Dragon though, since if Cast Form is an Ice type, both Blizzard and Ice Beam were stronger against Kingdra thanks to Stab. Drake leads with Altaria, and I set up Hail right away, transforming Ozone into his Hail form for the very first time. Once again, Hail yeah! Altaria simply Cotton Guarded, so I Ice Beamed it down the next turn. The first Flygon I Oko'd with Blizzard. The next one I Oko'd with Ice Beam. Salamence I Oko'd with Blizzard. Then in came Kingdra, who sadly could not be Oko'd by Blizzard. This battle took longer than any Pokemon in the entire league so far due to Kingdra putting Ozone to sleep with Yawn, Kingdra surviving Blizzard, me having to set the hail back up at one point, and Drake healing. Eventually though, right before Ozone fell back asleep a second time, I was able to take it out. The only obstacle remaining was Steven, the scariest fight so far. His team was the trickiest due to their variance in typing, meaning I couldn't simply go with one weather. 
The coverage I needed was Flamethrower, Scald, and Ice Beam, but I tossed on Sunny Day and the Heat Rock purely for Mega Metagross. Having the sun set up not only made it so Flamethrower would Oko the Mega Metagross, but it also made it so that cast form would take its steel type attacks much better. First was Skarmory, who would have fallen to Flamethrower if not for Sturdy, so it got to poison cast form with Toxic. I healed the poison on the same turn he full restored. I then attacked again, but instead of Toxic, he Steel Wing. Steven chose not to heal, so the next turn, I finished off Skarmory. In comes Aggron, another annoying sturdy Pokemon. That saved it from Scald, and I didn't get the burn, so it landed a Stone Edge on me. He didn't heal though, so my next Scald KO'd it. In came Claydol, which I was eager to KO before it set up Light Screen. Scald only did about two thirds, but thankfully it went for Reflect and not Light Screen. My next Scald KO'd. In comes Cradilly, which I Ice Beamed. It survived and confused me, which I was not about to deal with, so the next turn I full restored to both get me back to full and get rid of the confusion. Ozone simply had to tank one attack from Cradilly, then got to KO it the next turn. Next was Armaldo, which survived Scald. It hit me with X Scissor, but then Steven healed, allowing me to beat it with two more Scalds. Finally came the dreaded Mega Metagross, and I knew I had to set up Sun right then and there. I wasn't sure if I outsped it in its mega form, but I knew I would that first turn when it still used regular Metagross's speed. The sun comes up, and that allows me to tank a Meteor Mash, which I believe would have KO'd from that range if I wasn't a fire type. Unfortunately for me though, that Meteor Mash gave Metagross an attack boost. Once that happened, I was reasonably sure I was going to lose. The next turn, I knew a Giga Impact was coming since that was now its best move, so I healed up. I knew I'd live one at neutral attack, but I didn't know if I would at plus one. So Metagross goes for the move and Ozone lives. The next turn while it recharges, I Oko it with Flamethrower. The battle is over and Ozone and I are Pokemon League champions. There are a few fun little things that happened after the battle that I wanna mention. Number one, the shot of me in the Hall of Fame being orbited by just cast form is pretty funny. Number two, the shots of cast form during the various gym battles that happened during the credits actually remembered what weather form Ozone was in, which I thought was great. And number three, I defeated Mei in the post credits battle, but had to use one full restore during it due to Raichu's Thunder Wave causing some minor issues. It doesn't actually matter whether or not you lose this battle though. The aftermath cutscene is the same either way. So yes, I was able to beat all of Alpha Sapphire's main story using just one cast form. And not only did I beat the game with just cast form, but Ozone didn't actually faint a single time. Is this my most impressive Pokemon accomplishment to date? Absolutely not. That would be beating all the Let's Go Master Trainers with only shiny Pokemon. But this was very fun. Thank you so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of pretty bad YouTube ad rates right now. If you want to help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. And if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.